Hello and welcome to our Art Integrated Project of Science. We have divided our project into five sections and we will be discussing about the structure of kidney, the functioning of kidney, the excretory system with the help of working model, kidney defects and also an innovative way to cure kidney defect. So we will be heading on to the first section of our project where we will be discussing about the structure of the kidney. As we learned about the excretory system, we will be talking about one of the parts of the excretory system and that is the kidney. We all know that our kidneys help filter the blood by cleaning up the nitrogen waste present in our blood. We will talk about the structure of the kidney and the parts inside the kidney which helps in the filtration process. First of all, the kidneys are located at the abdominal cavity near to our spine. Each kidney is the size of a large fist considering that it is about 4 or 5 inches long. These bean-shaped structures are surrounded by a tough fiber tissue called a renal capsule. Let's explore inside the kidney where we will talk about the parts in it. Here inside the kidney, we see a network of renal arteries and veins. The functional parts of the kidney divides into two parts, the outer renal cortex and the inner renal medulla, where each renal cortex surrounds a portion of medulla called the renal pyramid. These pyramids are lines that appear on the medulla. The nephrons, which are the units for filtering the blood, are located between the cortex and the medulla. But one of the nephrons filtering portions, the renal corpuscles, is located in the cortex. Another part of the kidney called the renal tubules that pass from the renal cortex to the renal medulla. A part of the renal cortex and the medulla ray is a collection of renal tubules which drains the urine into one collecting duct. The tip of the medulla helps in emptying the urine through the minor major calx and the renal pelvis to the ureter. At the renal helum is where the ureter and the renal vein exit and the renal artery enters into the kidney. The renal helum contains healer fat. This lipid is next to a water filled cavity called the renal sinus. The renal sinus contains parts of the renal pelvis and the calx and separates these structures from the medullary tissue. Here is the labeling of the interior parts of the kidney. Kidneys have a lot of work to do and that's why we are always busy. One of the main jobs of the kidneys is to filter the waste out of the blood. Now look closely. Kidneys filter your blood and make urine. Blood passes into the kidney through the renal artery. Anything in the body related to the kidney is called renal and it returns through the renal vein. Once inside each kidney, the blood vessels enter capillaries and then enter thousands of tiny structures known as Bowman's capsule. Now air filtering begins. Here the blood is under high pressure. The waste molecule, urea, water and other small molecules pass out of the capillaries and enter into the kidney tube which is called a nephron. Now the liquid is processed. The coiled part of the nephron makes sure glucose doesn't escape into the urine and the loop of Henle makes the urine concentrated so that water is conserved. There are thousands of nephrons and each of them make urine. The liquid drains into the central part of the kidney and then flows down the ureter. Now some other tests performed by your kidneys. They balance the volume of fluid in the body. Our blood gets filtered through the kidneys many times a day. If the volume of fluid in your body goes down, the kidneys will not make much urine until the amount of fluid in your body goes up. They help in making red blood cells. The kidneys make a hormone that tells the body when to make some more red blood cells. Kidneys can change blood pressure. The kidneys make a hormone that can constrict the arteries in the body. This causes blood pressure to rise when a higher pressure is needed to make sure that blood gets to all parts of your body. And now we head on to the third section of the project. In this section, we will be discussing about the excretory system with the help of a working model.
Firstly, we will be looking at how urine, which is formed in the kidneys, makes its exit out of the body through the excretory system. The excretory system is a passive biological system that removes excess, unnecessary materials from the body fluids of an organism so as to help maintain internal chemical homeostasis and prevent damage to the body. Our blood collects waste from all over the body. The renal artery carries blood from the heart to the kidneys. The blood that flows through the renal artery contains nitrogenous wastes. The kidneys collect these wastes from the blood and form urine. As we had mentioned in the previous section, the kidneys are organs about the size of our fists that sits under our ribs along our backs. Kidneys filter blood to remove wastes. The waste and extra water combine to form urine. From the kidney, the urine enters two small tubes called ureters, one coming from each kidney. The ureters carry urine from the kidney to the bladder. The bladder is a hollow muscular organ that stores urine. We can usually control the urge to urinate. The urethral sphincters are two muscles used to control the exit of urine in the urinary bladder through the urethra. When we urinate, the smooth muscles of our bladder contract, which pushes the urine into another tube called the urethra. The urethra carries the urine from bladder to outside the body. And here is a labeled diagram of the excretory system. And now, we will be demonstrating the same process with the help of a working model. We human beings have one pair of kidneys. This is the left kidney and this is the right kidney. The kidneys are responsible for the filtration of blood that has nitrogenous wastes produced during protein metabolism. This is the renal vein. The renal vein carries filtered blood from kidney to the heart. Here is the renal artery. The renal artery carries blood from our heart to the kidney. The renal artery carries blood that contains nitrogenous wastes. These are the ureters. The ureters carry urine from the kidney to the bladder. Here is the bladder. The bladder stores urine. And finally, this is the urethra. The urethra carries urine from bladder to outside the body. Now we head on to the fourth topic of our project where we will be discussing about one defect which is the chronic kidney disease. Chronic kidney disease also known as CKD means your kidneys are damaged and can't filter blood 
the way they should. The disease is called chronic because the damage to your kidneys happens slowly over a long period of time. This damage can cause waste to build up in your body. Chronic kidney disease occurs when a disease or condition impairs kidney function, causing kidney damage to worsen over several months or years. Some diseases and conditions that cause chronic kidney disease include type 1 or type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, glomerulonephritis, and inflammation on the kidneys filtering units, prolonged obstruction of the units track from conditions such as enlarged prostate, kidney stones, and some cancer use of tobacco. Family history. Signs and symptoms of chronic kidney disease develop over time. If kidney damage progresses slowly, signs and symptoms of kidney disease may include nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, fatigue, and weakness, sleep problems, changes in how much you urinate, diseased mental sharpness, muscle twitching, and cramps, swelling of the feet and ankles, persistent itching, chest pain if body flu fluids builds up around the lining of the heart, shortness of breath if fluid builds up in the lungs, high blood pressure that's too difficult to control. Signs and symptoms of kidney diseases are often non-specific, meaning they can also be caused by other illnesses. Because your kidneys are highly adaptable and able to compensate for lost function, signs and symptoms may not appear until reversible damage has occurred. So basically, there are five stages of chronic kidney disease. Each step further the disease gets, the more dangerous the kidney's condition becomes. Chronic kidney disease can affect almost every part of our body. Potential complications may include fluid retention, which could lead to swelling in your arms and legs, high blood pressure or fluid in your lungs, a sudden rise in potassium levels in your blood, which could impair your heart's ability to function and may be life-threatening. Heart and blood vessels disease, weak bones and an increased risk of bone fracture, anemia, damage to your central nervous system, which can cause difficulty concentrating, personality or changes in seizures, decreased immune response, which makes you more vulnerable to infection, pericarditis and inflammation of the sac-like membrane that envelops your heart, irreversible damage to your kidneys eventually inquiring either dialysis or a kidney transplant for survival. And now we are heading towards our next topic which is innovative ideas to cure kidney defects. So let us start by talking about dialysis and kidney transplantation. So people with failed or damaged kidneys may have difficulty in eliminating waste and unwanted water from the blood. Dialysis is an artificial way of carrying out this process. There are two types of dialysis, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. The disadvantages of dialysis is that the patient must have his or her blood connected to the machine for several hours every week. Patient must follow a very rigid diet to avoid complications. They only work for a limited time for a patient. A kidney transplantation is a surgical procedure to place a healthy kidney from a living or deceased donor into a person whose kidneys no longer function properly. The disadvantages of kidney transplantation is that it is a major surgical procedure that has risk both during and after the surgery. The risk of the surgery include infection, bleeding and damage to the surrounding organs. Even death can occur, although this is very rare. As per our topic, now I'll be going to talk about wearable artificial kidney, which is an innovative idea to cure kidney defect. So here we can see how a wearable artificial kidney looks like. Wearable artificial kidney is a miniaturized wearable machine. It is designed to be worn like a belt and used by patients for up to 24 hours per day as a slow and gentle dialysis. This is considered as the best way to mimic the natural kidney and its functions to constantly cleaning the toxins in blood. 
The wearable artificial kidney is a new portable and wearable dialysis machine developed by Victor Gurda, a scientist from David Giffen School of Medicine, University of California, Los Angeles, in April 2012. The wearable artificial kidney has a unique design that helps eliminate fluid on a regular basis to reduce strain on the kidneys, lungs and heart while also reducing blood pressure. Instead of having to be plugged into an electrical outlet, the wearable artificial kidney is battery operated. The device also requires only 370 cc's of water as opposed to 40 gallons. Wearable kidneys can keep patients healthier. This is because they work around the clock, just like real kidneys. This leads to better blood pressure control, less fluid weight gain with less stress on the heart, improved clearance of waste from the blood, and a less strict diet. The advantage of a wearable artificial kidney is that it would provide the benefit of continuous blood filtration. It would reduce kidney disease illness and increase the quality of life for patients. Now, if you're talking about what's going to happen in the future, according to the researchers, the current wearable artificial kidney prototype will become smaller, lighter and easier to wear in the future. And that is our topic for the project all covered and on this final note we conclude our presentation.